This bill is not just an affront Three to minutes. the basic tenets of equality and religious non-discrimination that have been enshrined in our constitution, but it's an all-out assault on the very idea of India that our forefathers gave their lives for during the freedom struggle. Our freedom movement split on the issue of whether religion should be the determinant of nationhood. Those who believed in that were those who advocated Please the idea of Pakistan. You. Mahatma Gandhi onwards, Nehruji, Ambedkar, Maulana Azad believed the opposite, that religion has nothing to do with our nationhood, and they created a free country for all people of all religions, regions, castes, and languages. The Indian Constitution rejected the notion of the two-nation theory. If this bill passes, Madam Chair, it will mark the victory of Muhammad Ali Jinnah's thinking over that of Mahatma Gandhi. You cannot say you reject Pakistan while advocating the same logic as Pakistan. Ironically, it goes against the historic legacy of Hindus in this country. Swami Vivekan has been quoted already as saying how proud he was to speak of a nation that has long given refuge to the persecuted of all faith, nations and all faiths. We lived up to Vivekanan's ref we lived up to it by giving refuge to Tibetan refugees, to the Baha'i community, to Sri Lankan Tamils, and 10 million Bangladeshis, the largest refugee exodus in human history, without once asking them what their religion was. Today, you are violating Article 14 of the Constitution by singling out one community and refusing to grant only Pardon? them asylum from oppression. We have already had a partition of the Indian soil, Madam Chair. This bill is marking a partition of the Indian soul. And I beg this government not to proceed with this. You yourself, when speaking from the floor, went on about UNHCR's work. I actually, it's not HRC, it's HCR. I worked for them for 11 years. And I can tell you how sad it is that India is one of the few democracies in the world not to have either ratified the Refugee Convention or Protocol, and one of the very few democracies. Mantriji, I khud kehta that we have a wonderful record of refuge. I said the largest refugee exodus in our history, but we have not created any legal instruments. I went to the former Home Minister with my private member's bill requesting a national asylum and refugee policy. I've seen his MOS, I've seen those. The government has not been interested in pursuing this. Yet, yeah, madam, you took away some of that time, so let me <laughs> please give that back to you. The main point is that we don't have, unfortunately, the government taking any basic steps as required under international law to improve the determination of refugee status, to go ahead with ensuring treatment of refugees. That is, anybody who is fearing persecution on the grounds of ethnicity, gender, political opinion, sexual orientation, all these people are excluded from this bill. Madam, the Prime Minister himself has said, Sarkar ka ek hi dharm granth hota hai, Bharat ka samvidhan. The fact is, this bill goes against the basic structure of the Constitution, as That's Dr. Ambedkar has explained it, and it seems to me that differentiating on the basis of religion, Madam, so you, you, you've you taken more than, more, than, more than by, one minute. By singling out these countries, you've omitted Muslim minorities like the Ahmadiyyas in Pakistan, Shri the Raju Shias Bista. and Hazaras in Afghanistan, Shri the Rohingyas Raju from Bista. Myanmar. In fact, you've left out Myanmar altogether, even though we have a border with it, whereas Afghanistan is interrupted. Shri Raju by... Bista ji.